get a new couch. Next logical thing is to get a new apartment. It's in the be a fucking asshole handbook. So we're headed downtown right now. I'm about to hop on the subway and head into like the lower east area, lower east side area. So we're checking out two, possibly three apartments today. I'll explain a little bit more on, on the move. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna do it or not, but I'll show you the places. Hey. How are you? Good, how are you? Okay, uh, I will definitely take you up on that. Not today, okay. but I will stay in touch if this falls through. Oof, I like this space a lot. And there's the one bedroom back there, you said, right? Yeah, I was in. I'm definitely looking to move downtown, though. That's the Williamsburg Bridge. That's Manhattan, Lower East Side. That'll take you straight into Brooklyn, into Williamsburg, which is where I lived when I lived in Brooklyn. So I'd have to come over here when I wanted to come into Manhattan. I biked over this bitch one time, worst decision of my life. It's got the big open area. The kitchen's orange, which I low key kind of love because I know everybody will hate it. Huge open room. Big window of light coming through. So that's the Williamsburg Bridge up there. Lower East Side. One bathroom. Bedroom's nice and spacious too. It actually works. I could bring my bed in here somewhere and also probably put my desk somewhere. Hmm. The brick wall. What? Uh, so I'm just videotaping. Talk to myself. Don't mind me. Nice big old kitchen. The bedroom's big. This one's a thousand square feet. You have laundry in here. Mm. I really like both apartments. Huge fan of the exposed brick. I think that'd be fucking fire for the backgrounds of the videos. Plus we could set the wall up real nice. The only unfortunate part is that, one, they're fucking expensive because they're in Soho or this area, but two, they want two year leases, which like, I could probably negotiate and get out of it, but just a pain in my dick. I don't love the area, to be honest. I kind of got like the, it, these places are on like the outskirts of the areas I want to be in. New day, new apartment search. I think we're down in Soho. I actually fucking love this area. This is the first apartment I'm looking at where I love the area. The Red Lion, I've had a few drunken nights there. I'm pretty sure when my sister first moved to New York City, she lived on 
the street that was like two seconds away from here. This is a cool area. It's right by Washington Square Park. It's right by NYU. A lot of restaurants and bars in the area. Big fan. I'm going to see the apartment in like two minutes. This is the first one I've been to where I'm like, oh, you know, I actually do fuck with this area. What avenue is this? I'm going the wrong way. There's a city bike stop right by the apartment. I don't really need much more than that, to be honest. Carbone is in the area, which is a wildly popular Italian restaurant. So this could be walk in there is the kitchen. This is actually wider than I expected it to be. I'm gonna say this is 10 feet maybe. You fit the studio in here, most likely. How do you open these? Leaf. Ah. Is that as high as they go? Yep. Oh. Snacks can fit in there. Oh boy. We're about to go live on Clubhouse. Let me figure out how to even do this fucking thing. Hello, friends. Y'all hear me? Cool. It was a shit show. I heard you guys talking about falling on ice and, and whatnot, so I experienced a lot of that last night. God, I'd imagine if you uh, if you hung out outside long enough, your beard would, would turn into straight ice. Can we, uh, can we bring Kyle? Kyle Yates up here onto the stage. I actually kind of got a question for him. You got to think a lot of uh, a lot of these sports books that start coming out now. They get so much money up front from you know VCs or wherever they get their money back from. And as as they're trying to reach new audiences, the way they do that is is through people like us. You know, Sal's obviously done a great great job positioning himself as sort of a thought leader in the space. And once those companies want to get to the audiences, like they can continue spending money on TV commercials and billboards and all that kind of stuff. But if they want to get right to the to the grid of it and and hit their exact target audience like you just go through dudes like Sal who literally put out videos about sports betting and how to do it and it's nothing to them but like yeah you put you put five thousand dollars into a content creator's hands and, and they get fucking giddy about it you know what I mean like the impact that you could have through hitting a really loyal audience for such a fraction of the price and uh, if you could figure out a way to if you could focus on that as a company and figure out a way to scale that you know hit hit 10 or 15 intermediate to small content creators with loyal audiences rather than spending a lump sum on one uh, one campaign that you know hope you hope works or not diversifying the way you're marketing. It's all right. So for shirt on for y'alls, put my titties away. By now, you've probably heard of the app Clubhouse, and it's basically this. Uh, it, it's it's sort of an exclusive app, or at least like that's the allure of it. Inclusive, I should say, not elusive. Where it's strictly audio. You start these rooms. They're called clubs. And there's people on stage. So it's imagine being at like a school auditorium or something, or you're at an event, like a networking event, and there are speakers on stage and there's everybody in the audience. It's almost live streaming podcasting. So you'll start a topic. The one we just did was about content creation. So content creation, 
and it's niched down to in the fantasy sports space. And this club was started by this guy, JL, or John Luke. Someone that I connected with a couple of years back because he had just gotten into the fantasy space and he had wanted to, I guess, like pick my brain a little bit about stuff within the industry. And we kind of kept a relationship and Clubhouse came out and I knew, you know, when you're a young creator, not young in, in the sense of age, but when you are starting out your creation journey, we'll lay it out there nice and flat like that. When you're starting to create content, you need to build some sort of leverage somewhere, right? You need to find where you can grow, where you can grow an audience. Every time a new social platform starts to evolve, and people gravitate towards it and have a natural audience into it, most people are gonna be hesitant to get on it. As you could see, i.e. TikTok. Everybody is hesitant to get on it until they see everybody else on it. And by the time that happens, there were already people on it doing the content that you wish you were doing that had a lot of eyes on it. So Clubhouse is an app that came out, and as you can see, audio is becoming more and more of a, an important space within content creation and just the way businesses and brands conduct themselves. You know, podcasting is obviously huge, but there will be a lot of different avenues where audio disperses and becomes a bigger part of the, the game plan and the marketing plan for businesses because it's very secondary. Whereas you guys watch these videos on YouTube, there's obviously a time and place for videos. You guys watching this clearly prefer a video. I'm someone who prefers audio. So audio apps are fantastic for me. I would say almost all of the learning I've done over the last three to four years has come by way of podcasts. This is basically like how I go live with you guys sometimes, right? Like during the season, I'll go live for waiver wire on Monday. This is live streaming version in audio. So you start the this, this clubhouse app and you get on there and you can build an audience that way and it's so important to be looking at those platforms because demand for content outnumbers the supply of content creators that's how it was for every platform that has come before this that's how it will continue to be for every platform that comes after this okay it happened with myspace and facebook and then twitter and then instagram and eventually there's too many content creators on there because they all heard that there was a lot of space to grow and then there's too many and then you can't grow so Clubhouse is a new app that I'd like to experiment with. And luckily a friend of mine in the network is the one who pretty much set up the first fantasy sports networking club within there. He reached out to me. So I'm kind of like a leader in that club room right now. Myself, Salvitri and John, John Luke, as he corrected me, I called him John. He's like, everyone calls me John Luke or JL. I'm like, so listen fucking here, John. No, good guy. That goes to another point of like providing value for other people where a lot of the times, you know, these new platforms come out and I don't necessarily have a lot of time or energy to spend on them because I'm putting so much of my energy into YouTube because YouTube is what drives everything else. And most of the results come from YouTube. Therefore, I don't, you know, I don't invest a lot of time into other platforms because I don't see the ROI on it yet. But a lot of people haven't built up the leverage where they have a, a, a YouTube following like mine where they can help shift that focus to other platforms. So you need to be looking at these new apps. John Lu came to me and was like, yo, I'm gonna start this this club, this fantasy network. I know you're really interested in businessing and, and uh, businessing, like what the fuck does that even mean? In business and branding and marketing and, and networking within the space, like, do you wanna come in on this with me? And I was like, sure, you know? And initially when you get reached out to about an opportunity like that, it's kind of like, okay, you know, this is cool, but like there's always a lot of work that goes on in order to make things like this happen. So for him, without having the audience that I have, he has to provide, and this is not like an, uh, I'm trying to say this without seeing from like a top level, like, oh, narcissistic, or you need to provide me value. But when you're in the content world, if you're trying to gain hold of someone or build a relationship with someone who has a bigger platform than you do, you need to find some way to get leverage and give them value. So so JL was like, yo, I, I started the Fantasy Sports Club. I know you're interested in business. Would you like to come on and become like a thought leader within the space for it? I've already started the club. I'm gonna be organizing the rooms. I'm gonna have the topics. People are already gonna be in the audience. Literally, all you gotta do is show up and do your thing. For me, that's easy. All I'm doing is investing time. I don't have to set things up. I don't have to promote it. I don't have to organize it. I don't have to work on the logistics. He just did it for me, boom. And then in my mind, he just built some leverage over me. So over the long run, we build this relationship, this business content relationship that helps both sides, you know? And that's the way you gotta be thinking of things. A lot of times you put the shit on a pedestal, but it's as easy as doing stuff like that. You know, it's as easy as organizing things for someone. It's as easy as taking something off their plate. It's as easy as helping them grow when they don't have the time to do it themselves. So like I've had kids reach out to me. It's like, hey, we wanna run TikTok. We let us run the Big Dogs TikTok channel. We had one kid who started it, did like two videos and then just stopped doing it. And a lot of people like to talk the talk. They don't, they don't wanna walk the walk once the work comes down to the amount of work you actually got to do. It's a lot of fucking work. It always is. Content is a, is a game of work, man. It's not, it ain't, it's a fucking game, but we ain't 
fucking play around. Really, uh, he dropped off and then another kid was like, let me do the, the big dog's TikTok. And I was like, okay, let's give it another run. He's been going for about a week and a half, two weeks now. We've had a couple videos that have gotten up to, uh, I think like over 2000 views or whatever. You know, I'm not too mixed up in the numbers, but he's doing it consistently. And we're seeing a little bit of growth on the channel there. So he's someone who's building up leverage in my mind as someone who, if he needs to ask me a favor or if he needs some kind of shout out or if he needs something, right? Like he has that for me because he's working hard for me and doing something that I can't do myself. My biggest takeaway from talking in Clubhouse and a couple of things that I've done, a couple projects I've worked on recently is like, don't ever, if you're, if you're trying to get something from someone, the more vague you are with your ask, the worse chance you have of, of making it happen. You need to be very specific. You need to show right away what it is you're giving to that person in order for them to want to continue the conversation or even be intrigued about what you're doing. The more work you put in for the other person, the less likely it is for them to want to help you or work with you or do whatever it is you're trying to get from them, okay? If I'm reaching out to a brand, or a sponsor that I think would be good fit for us. I'm making sure I include everything in that email, exactly what value I'm giving to them. I love their product. I've been using their product, so I know everything about their product. I know my audience. The demographic is perfect because there's people like me who would use your product. I'm super passionate about it. It's very easy for me to fit into my audience. Here are a couple of YouTube clips of me actually talking about your product before we're even working together. You link it right there so they don't have to do extra work. Here's my Twitter if you want to follow me. Like, here's all this shit. Let me know if you have any questions. I think we'd be great to work together. Let's get on a call don't just fucking reach out and say hey i want to get you on my podcast let's make this happen hey i think we should work together like no like that's no fucking incentive there for anyone right like there's no value being given so before you shoot some lazy ass message before you shoot your shot do something creative if i'm shooting my shot at zendaya you think i'm throwing a fucking hey into her dms and expecting a reply i'm making her 200 memes i'm making 200 memes made specifically for Z Bay Bay, and I'm shooting one in every single day until she finally sees it. Then she sees it, she can scroll back up through all the memes and she'll be like, holy shit, this kid's creative, he's funny, he's persistent, he's trying really hard, and now I'm still not gonna answer him. But I got a better chance than all you hey motherfuckers out there. What's cracking, big dogs? You are hearing my voice today on Wednesday, whatever day it is, it is fucking March 10th. Um, normally you'd be hearing some of you guys probably don't even know who the fuck I am, to be honest, which is a testament to Mike and Noah's work on this channel and bringing you guys over as subscribers. Um, I'm Nick. I kind of started this whole big dog shit. Bunk bed breakdowns is a YouTube channel under the big dog's umbrella. <clears throat> and, uh, Wednesdays for a long time, you know, bunk bed breakdowns was started between myself and Noah first. Cause he was in college at the time. And you guys used to shit on him for having a bunk bed in his background. And then I brought Mike on as a, as a dynasty content creator. And then it was the three of us. And then I kind of dipped off and let them do to them to do their things. And, uh, there will not be a Wednesday show going forward between Noah and Mike. And I wanted to come on here. So y'all hear it straight from the Hep Bay's mouth to clear the air, because I know there's going to be some weird conspiracies and shit going on about some shit behind the scenes or some kind of beef or whatever. I'm going to break the situation down to y'all clearly plainly simply so there's no confusion to be had here okay we value authenticity and we value transparency with you guys and that's what i will always try to bring for better or worse okay sometimes it honestly most of the time it fucking hurts my business but i'd uh i'd rather be open with you guys so i don't have to lie down the road so basically here's what happened here's what happened here's what happened I'll preface with this. Mike and Noah, both very much still under big dogs. Both will continue to create content under um, under bunk bed breakdowns. Both, everyone's cool. Something did kind of happen over the last week or two within the team that should probably get some more explanation. As we start to approach the off season this year and, and you know, all the off seasons, we start to create the uh, big dogs dynasty draft guide, the dynasty rookie draft guide, right? And last year, myself, Noah, and Mike worked on it. And I think uh, we've created, this will be the third year we created it, maybe, whatever. Regardless, uh, I texted them, texted Noah and Mike in the group chat, and I was like, yo, uh, we're starting to put together the draft guide. We are going to be updating all of our rankings. I wanted to make sure everyone had the rankings up to date. I think I hit them up on like a Thursday or Friday. I was like, by end of weekend, let's get all this shit done. Let's get all this shit going and make sure we have, we have rankings, right? Just by end of the weekend, get those over to me. I think Noah answered. He was like, okay. And then Sunday hit, 
I think Noah was like, I'm good to go. I didn't hear anything from Mike. And then he texted me, I want to say Monday or Tuesday, a day later or whatever. Not a big deal. Uh, and he was like, yo, sorry, I didn't get around to getting you the rankings. I had been working on the rankings behind the scenes, but I hate using fucking fantasy pros, which is what we, you know, is what every kind of person in the industry has to use. Unfortunately, it's kind of, it's, it's not shitty. It's, 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 it's a good free resource to make rankings, but not very customizable, not very uh, aesthetically pleasing. And Mike's like, I've been working hard behind the scenes, like putting my rankings together via like Google Sheets. And I've been integrating like Debbie shit. So it doesn't exactly fit with what we have because you put all the rankings together as a team onto the table and you could embed that right to the website, which is what we do for our Dynasty Draft Guide. And Mike was like, sorry, I didn't get the rankings to you. I'm actually thinking about starting my own Patreon and, and Discord and whatever and like only allowing people to get it through there. And that kind of took me back a little bit. Like so, some of you guys might've been following this kind of like a little bit of a storyline up to this point, because I talked about it with Steve on why you yelling. Um, so you knew that, you know, when Mike said that to me at first, I was like, okay, you know, this is, uh, it's a little odd. Um, but like, okay, let me kind of hear him out and see, you know, where his mind's at or like the logistics behind it. So we had gotten on a call and he had kind of told me, you know, what he was thinking and that his ranking stuff would not be available via the Dynasty Draft Guide. And this is not a problem. This is not a problem for me per se in terms of like, listen, I, I could care less if all of you guys shifted over from our Patreon or our Discord over to, to Mike's. It's not about like competition. It's not about money. But what we stand for at Big Dogs is is a team mentality, right? Like we've we've built this hand fucking woven your mother in the kitchen homegrown type of shit over here and we're all 100 percent ride or die for the brand and i'm not saying mike's not but the way i felt like he approached it was a little bit individualistic at the time and i don't think he did this with the intention of like going against us whatsoever mike's been you know one of the biggest supporters of big dog since we started this whole shit and uh, he continues to be, obviously, and he does a lot of content for us. And he works very, very hard, and I respect his work ethic and the content he puts out for us, of course. Um, so when he did that, it wasn't necessarily like, it wasn't necessarily like, oh, you're taking away some of our audience or our competition or our money. It had nothing to do with that. It was more so like if you saw a gap or a flaw or something in the Big Dog's brand or the community, why don't we try to fix that? Like, at the end of the day, we're trying to grow this fucking thing into the, sp into the spaceship that we can launch it to fucking Venus. You know what I'm saying? So... It, I took it, I didn't necessarily take it personally. I just took it as a natural fucking human would. I was like, oh, this seems like it's going against what we're building as we come together. Like Snacks and Animal have been my childhood friends since we were fucking, uh, well, Animal recently, probably the last five years or so, but Snacks, I've known Snacks since we were, uh, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, or whatever. Uh, Scott and Noah have been working with me for the last few years, probably three, four years at this point. And Mike's the newest one of the team, basically. Um, so... Him doing this, I'm okay with. I talked to Steve and he's like, that's kind of weird. Like you should kind of hit up Mike and see, you know, what his angle is, what his long-term play is. Because when you start separating the two communities, when you have, you know, the big dogs community, which we're all kind of working towards putting together, and then you have Mike's, you know, Wolfpack, his discord and his rankings and his community, it's like a railroad kind of going on different tracks. Eventually it's going to be really hard to put those two things back together. Um, so, sorry, I just got a text. Um, so I started thinking more about it. Like, to be honest, at first it wasn't a big deal to me, but I have people that I surround myself with that I think have myself and the brand in the best interest of their mind. And when they're like, you should look into this a little more. I was like, okay. So I hit up Mike and I was like, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I'm actually feeling a little bit weird about the way you're going about this and kind of branching off. And we had, we had talked through it and it came away like peacefully and it came away fine. And then I had talked to some other members of the team and they're all like, yo, this is kind of fucked up because this is something that we've all helped build as a brand. And then he's kind of using that platform that we've provided in a sense to go out and build his own community within our community. Right. Again, again, like I really need to get this point across. It, it's nothing to do with like money or not paying. It's like if that was a concern, obviously we want to fix that and we want to settle that. Like come to me with that. But it's but it, it was it was like the lack of wanting to build it within the big dogs community which rubbed a lot of the team members the wrong way. Um, so once I started hearing it from some of the other guys on the team, I was like, okay, this could present itself as, as a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem going forward. So I hit up Mike, I'm filming this on 
uh, Monday night. This is going out Wednesday morning. So I hit up Mike today, Monday. Um, I was like, yo, listen, uh, again, because what, what had happened was he started doing the Market Watch Monday videos on the Bunk Bed Breakdown channel. And he was promoting his Patreon. He was promoting his, his Discord, uh, which again, is of course, is like direct competition with what we're building here at Big Dogs. And the first one went out and I was like, okay, like, you know, just let him kind of get started and let him get going and ramp up. And then the rest will be big dogs focused. And then the second one came out today or Monday, two days ago, three days ago. And it was the same thing. It was, you know, promoting his stuff and it is his content. And again, I respect the platform and the work ethic that he puts into his shit. And I, I do want him to succeed for sure. But I look at the other team members who are not okay with this. Um, and it's no one like specifically, it was kind of like a group thing, to be honest. Um, and just like, you know, I know the amount of work that like Noah's put into this. And then Mike's kind of using that platform that other people have helped build to promote his personal shit rather than the brand when everybody else is very brand focused. Like everyone else is trying to ride this thing out completely and fully and 100% invested into the brand as the greater good in a sense. And uh, and when I had approached Mike about that, I was like, listen, um, thinking about it more, I'm not cool with you promoting your own shit on one of our channels that we built, that we built as a team, that we built as a family. Because I, I love these dudes, man. And I've, I've built this as a family together. Um, so this might be coming off a little more serious than it sounds, but like this is one of the first internal problems that we've really had as a brand. And uh, and I said that to Mike and he was like, listen, I, I don't I don't want this to sound like this is 20 minutes of me shitting on Mike whatsoever. Mike was like, dude, I'm so sorry. You know, he's like completely understanding. Like I absolutely know where you're coming from. That was my bad, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Like I'll take this shit down immediately. You know, and it wasn't like that serious, but um, Mike was like, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I would never do anything to like compromise the brand or go against the brand or whatever. And I understood where he was coming from. He's not someone who likes to ask for things basically. Um, so like helping out with the draft guide and, and, uh, he wants to be more involved in the business side of things. And he's kind of someone who's silent on that, on that part. And I respect that because I'm kind of like that as well. Like I do my work and I do my content, I do whatever it is. And if I don't get the acknowledgement for it, it's not like I'm going to go out of my way to try to get it. It's more so like I keep working or I do my own thing and I fend for myself. And he didn't want to like continually ask me for things, which again, I can absolutely relate to. Um, so basically where that leaves us today is just that we had that talk today. Um, he understands and he's like, listen, I'm, I'm big dogs focused. I'm big dogs related. It's obviously going to keep putting out killer content for uh, Market Watch Monday and the other stuff that he has in the works. And I want him to continue to, it's, it's the reason I give these people the platform because I want them to build their own personal brand um, under big dogs. And, 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 and it makes us all, you know, a, a rising tide, a rising tide is basically the, the, the theme here for the big dogs. And, um, and, and then the Noah and Mike video not happening today or not go, happening going forward is completely unrelated to this, um, completely unrelated to this whole, whatever you want to call it, drama, whatever the fuck it is. This is because like, if you guys have been following bunk bed breakdowns, if you guys have been watching these two kind of build themselves up as creators, I see it from my point of view, someone who's been doing this for five or six years, I see a lot of me in both of them in that they work fantastic individually. I, a lot of people find it hard to do solo videos or do videos just like this. This is when I'm most comfortable. I find it difficult to do multi-person videos. I find it difficult to do calls over Zoom. I find it difficult to do videos and content with other people, to be honest with you. This is my most comfortable thing. And I see that in their stuff. Like I watch their individual shit. And to be honest, it's a lot better than when they're doing it together. And it was always like that. It was better. It, it was it, their individual stuff is better than when myself and them two were on it together as well. And the reason is because they're losing a little bit more passion for some of the stuff that they would do together because they're so passionate about the individual shit they're doing. Like Noah's really getting into the NBA top shot stuff. Uh, Mike is really into doing his research and making sure he's coming correct for the Market Watch Monday stuff. And like, this is not taking away from that. This is, I want them to focus on their strengths rather than their weaknesses. So I said, listen, like, rather than me forcing you to do the Wednesday video, would you guys rather, uh, would you guys rather have that flexibility to do whatever you want on the Wednesday, Thursday shows and like follow your passions in that sense? I always talk about not putting yourself in a box. Like I would hate if I was forced to do a video that, I could just tell the passion wasn't really there from them too. And it felt more like a chore. And I'm like, I don't ever want to put someone in the position where they have to do that. They have to do a certain thing because they feel like that's what's best for, you know, that's what's best for what Nick said or for the brand or whatever. Like I want this to be an open experience where people can be creative. Okay. Um, so they're not going to be doing the weekly 
bunk bed breakdowns video together anymore. I think once like the draft happens, they will be doing some on and off, maybe bi-weekly or some shit like that. But I, I want to say like Noah's going to be doing a lot of NBA Top Shot stuff. I think he's still he's going to be doing a lot more like uh, Discord discussions where he actually brings a few of you guys on to the video and you guys do like a, a you know like a call with him. He'll bring on like two or three people from the Discord channel. And then Mike, Mike, I think wants to do um the mark and watch one day thing like he normally does and then also have like an interview so almost like two deep dives like he did with a uh, bean counter a couple weeks ago so do one of those a week and also mark and watch monday and i'm like listen those are their best pieces of content the shit that they put their heart and soul into and like can work on that stuff when they're most creative is when we're going to get the best product and, and get the best personality out of those guys um so i brought it up and i think they both kind of agreed with with that and we'll kind of go from there. So this is just, uh, I guess, another state of the union. I've had to do a lot of these. Listen, I'm learning as someone who's um, not only relatively young and inexperienced in the business world, but working with friends and working with people that I have personal relationships with. So I obviously know I'm going to fuck things up and I know I'm not doing everything right, but I'm trying my best to make sure that um, I don't fucking steer this ship into an iceberg. And I think I do that by investing into people and making sure that first and foremost, they are happy. A lot of the times it's difficult for me to do that because I do have these blinders on where I'm looking long-term and I realize a lot of these guys are working in the very short term and, and uh, intermediate because that's the only stuff that they can work on. If they're not, if I'm not allowing them to help shape the business in a, in a long-term vision sense, then the only stuff left for them is here. And when I put my blinders on, I don't see that stuff. So things can get a little bit murky. Things can get a little, little bit mucky for me here. Um, so I, uh, I just figured I would address you guys rather than have some weird fucking stigma sitting in the middle again. Um, just to, to summarize, we on the big dogs team, myself and some of the team members, uh, felt a little weird about the way Mike kind of did that. As soon as I told Mike, he was like, my bad dude. Like I didn't, you know, the intention was not there to, to branch off or, um, you know, compete with the brand or anything like that. I, I think it was completely harmless. Um, so no hard feelings there whatsoever. He's still going to be doing his content weekly for you guys. Noah's going to be doing his content weekly for you guys. Nothing bad there. Um, but no more Wednesday bunk bed breakdowns for the time being. Maybe we'll figure something out where someone else comes on and does it, you know, whatever the fucking case may be. Um, so thank y'all for listening. Uh, if you have any further questions, comments, stories, plots, crypto punks, you want to share any conspiracy theories, now would be the time to drop them, and now would be the time for me to fucking yell at you in the comments. Okay, so that clip might have been a little bit confusing. First of all, I just want to say I was on a call with Mike for like an hour and a half yesterday. Everything is cool with myself, Mike, the brand, Noah, everybody involved in any situation here, the whole team. But that video was basically like after myself, Mike, and Noah had come to the conclusion that we weren't going to do the bunk bed breakdown videos anymore. We were kind of like, okay, how do we address the situation so that people don't think there's anything weird between it or think like something happened where there's like beef going on or whatever. And I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll just make a video kind of laying out the situation and I'll put it out there. So that video was gonna go live Wednesday morning. So earlier this morning on the Bunk Bed Breakdowns channel, but I had kind of decided against it. Actually, well, I made that video prior to the call that I had with Mike yesterday. And then after that call, I was just like, you know, I don't know if it's necessary to throw that up onto the Bunk Bed Breakdowns channel. And like, I don't know. I don't know. Something about me was just like, I don't want to put that out there on that channel. So I'll just put it in my vlog because this is more like personal for me or whatever. So that video was explaining the situation. But since then, everything has been completely reconciled. Not that it was in a bad place before, but we're fine. Got a shit ton of stuff. There's a lot of personal shit that's happened with big dogs. Uh, especially if you've been following the content, you, you're kind of up to date. If you've been listening to Why Yelling, you watch Fade the Public. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in Big Dogs over the last couple of weeks. And most of that stuff, while I'm not putting out vlogs as often, basically, if you guys are interested in most of the shit that's going on, just watch Why Yelling, the podcast that myself and Steve do. Every Sunday, we put it out in video form. We just started doing video, but it's been up on podcasts for the last like 35 episodes or whatever. So we're going to go in deep. We shut down the Discord, which caused fucking pandemonium. There was Discord inside of the Big Dogs Discord. Uh, so I got a lot of shit for that. That, then there's the whole deal within the big dogs team and what was going on with Mike. And then we have animals pitching me to, he wants us basically to create like a TikTok house, but out of New York city, 
because we can't afford to buy a place that's as big as a house of, that we need to take off. He wants to do a one year fucking sprint on content creation where we're all together for basically a year and we need a place big enough in order to do that. So he's pitching me on the idea of moving out of Manhattan for like a year. We're gonna go in depth on all of this fucking out of controlness that's happening within Big Dogs on this week's Why You Yelling, which will drop on Sunday. Hopefully I'll see y'all there. So sorry, this vlog is just out of control as usual. There's no rhyme or reason to anything. Ah, this My shoulder is so sore right now from holding you up. I did go out last night and have like 55 margaritas. I like helped my friends move a couple weeks ago and they're like, oh, we wanna repay you for helping us move. Let us take you out to dinner. So like my two friends took me and my other friend Trey out. It was actually their friend, but I met through them. So ah, whatever. It's all fucking friends. We had a bunch of margaritas. I woke up and I was like, oh, I wonder if I have any good pictures from last night. You know, see if we took anything good. No. There's one mood today and one mood only. That's the end of the vlog. I hope y'all enjoyed. Uh, we'll see you on Sunday for Why Young. We'll see you tomorrow for Fade the Public. Nope, tomorrow's tomorrow for Fade the Public. Oh, my shoulder's done. I'm done. Goodbye. Hey! <laughs>